Hey everybody, Nick Norton here, and this Pro Tools video is about how to bounce or export your music so that people who don't have Pro Tools can actually listen to it. For instance, we might make it into an MP3 that you could play back uh, on your phone in the car, or export a WAV file that you could send uh, to a mastering engineer, or uh, onto a distributor to put it up on Spotify or whatnot. So there are two ways to do this in Pro Tools. I'm going to show both of them. First, the uh, fancy technical way, and then the quick way. And the fancy technical way is actually pretty easy. You just select the audio region, such as here I've got a snare drum that you want to export, and you press Command-Shift-K. That's Control shift k on a PC. And here you select the file type that you would like to export. Wave is always good for high quality audio. MP3 is always good for low quality audio. If you just wanna like send someone a quick, uh, here's the part you wanna learn kind of thing. Um, the format, we have the choice of multiple mono or interleaved. You virtually always wanna leave that. Uh, I don't wanna say always. You usually leave that on interleaved because that creates a single wave file with, uh, for instance, if it's stereo, both the left and right channels in the file. If you were to select multiple mono and you had a stereo region selected, it would export two files, uh, one for the left side and one for the right side. The only situation in which I have found that useful is for sending 5.1 stems in the film or TV world because there are uh, different channel orders for different distributors. Uh, so if, you, if they're all labeled, it's much harder for the person after you doing the layback to screw it up. Uh, anyway, we're going to leave that on interleaved. Bit depth, uh, you can choose here, always do 24, CD quality is 16, but someone else can deal with that. Uh, sample rate is good to leave it at the same as your session, unless you need to convert it for some reason. For instance, uh, a lot of distributors want 44.1 for music, all film and TVs at 48. Mastering engineers sometimes want 96, but if your session wasn't recorded at 96, there's no reason to do that. Um, and then it's gonna ask where you want it. And the default here is your audio files folder. I generally think that's a bad idea because it's kind of hard to find. And when you're messing with your audio files folder, you might screw something else up. For purposes of this, I'm going to just stick it on my desktop. Also usually not a great idea. It's good to make a folder called exports or uh, deliveries or something like that when you do this. So gonna choose the where's my desktop there it is cool open hit export and that was very quick because it didn't really have to do any processing I wasn't changing the uh, the sample rate or anything um, but let's see where it went on the desktop it'd be great if I could find stuff ah there it is and it has the same name as this region see this region was called DM post 22 exercise snare that's what this file's called. Um, and now if we want to listen to it, there's the snare. Now listen closely. That sounds different than this. But it sounds the same as this. And that is because we have exported this audio file and only this audio file we haven't exported any processing like our plugins that is happening after it uh, so if you want your plugins to uh, to have their sounds attached to whatever it is you're exporting there are two options you can either bounce which again we're gonna look at in a second or you can record down to a new track I've made this drums track here that is monitoring see these three tracks are all being sent to drums. I did that in a previous video. Uh, so we could just hit record here and start recording. And 
now if we were to command shift K that and put it on the desktop again, it's gonna be called drums underscore zero two. There it is. And here's our drums file. And all we really did was take what's in this region and take it out of Pro Tools. The reason you'd wanna do it that way is uh, because if say you're doing a mix down using outboard gear, where you're sending these three tracks to a, to a summing mixer and a compressor and stuff like that, and then recording the output back into a stereo track, that's a more advanced topic, then you don't really wanna do any further processing on that because you've done it all in the analog domain. Uh, so you just wanna get your files. All right, on to bouncing. Let's get rid of that. Uh, something important to note for bouncing is that the way I have this routed with these tracks going to an audio track you can record on, even if input monitoring is turned on, they will not be included in the bounced audio file. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and delete this and then reroute these three tracks to my main output by holding uh, Option and Shift. You can do multiple things and let's do that and see all three changed. Be careful not to just hold Option because that'll change everything in your session uh, and can really screw you up. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the guitars here. Let's get rid of this summing track I was using or mix down track or whatever you wanna call it. And let's send these all to the main output and let's listen for a moment. Only hearing drums, why? Because they're soloed. There's a uh, full band music. Uh, okay, so let's say I wanna uh, bounce just these couple bars here. I just selected an amount of time and I'm gonna go to file uh, bounce mix, which I didn't know where that was because I usually just press command option B, but let's do that. And it brings up this menu where we have a file name, let's call it Wales or Neat Bounce Example. And we have options for file type here. Again, WAV, AF, MP3. Those are pretty much the only three you're gonna use unless you're bouncing a movie file or someone specifically asks for something else. Uh, M4A is basically Apple's version of MP3. Uh, MXF is a long story to explain. Uh, I'm gonna do MP3 right now. And it's important to check your mix source uh, you want to usually just pick physical output to match what's happening on your speakers. However, if you had some complex routing going on, uh, you might want to pick like a different bus or something like that. Uh, and fun little trick, you can actually bounce uh, more than one mix source at a time. So like if I wanted to get, oh, let's just say a mono file of the left side. Oh, it's only letting me do two and it only does that as wave all right i just learned something we all just learned something hooray um mp3 is automatically 16 bit i've got prompt for location checked here so it will pop up a window saying where do you want to save this when i hit bounce uh you can also pre-do that by choosing a directory or if you put it in the session folder it'll create a bounced files folder uh and now this is pretty important this little box here that says offline that means, do you want Pro Tools to uh, play it in real time as it bounces, or do you want it to just process it and a little progress bar fills up and it makes your file? Um, so I'm gonna do it offline for purposes of this video. You might do it online, so uh, uncheck this box so you can listen to it all as, as it's bouncing and catch any mistakes. So I'm gonna hit bounce, and if you're in MP3 mode, oh, well, okay, desktop, whatever. It's gonna uh, ask you a couple more things. The encoding speed, fastest versus highest quality. Again, if you're just sending someone like a, oh, here's the drum part for you to learn. Fastest, fine, whatever. If you're like sending this to a client and being like, here's where the mix is at now. Well, you should probably send a WAV file, but if you're low on time or low on drive space or something, put it into highest quality mode for this video, because it's YouTube audio, I'm gonna do fastest. And then the bit rate here, I normally uh, just keep it at the max. Um, but like, if it's a podcast and it was a poorly recorded microphone, like whatever, 128, fine. Um, let's, let's throw it in the middle somewhere. Um, 
And then this down here is called metadata. And it's, uh, these fields are attached to the MP3 file. And I'll show you, or make the artist me, Nick, and the album uh, not music for sunsets. And I say that because my album that just came out is music for sunsets. Uh, and y'all should go listen to it. Uh, and the genre, I'm gonna say acid jazz. Um, and the comment is cool. Okay, great. And uh, you can set some defaults for that to make it quicker. And we click OK. And remember, it only bounces the area that was highlighted. And now we should have somewhere on this desktop that's starting to get messy. There it is, Whales and Eat Bounce example. And if I preview it by pressing space, there it is with the artist name and the album name. And that's all great. Uh, it is worth oops, excuse me, a um, couple things. One is if you can't hear it, it's not gonna be in the bounce. So if, for instance, I had the snare track soloed and I bounced this same region, in fact, let's do that. Call it snare bounce. Let's just, yeah, whatever, all this is fine. Desktop's fine, that's all fine. Does it pretty quick, because it's only one track it has to think about. Now, it's just the snare, because the snare was soloed. Um, final note, if you want to bounce something like the same length each time, one thing you can do, I'm going to press Command-Shift-N to make a new track, and I'm just going to make a mono track. And I'm going to uh, select the length of the song, and come down here, and... I'm going to press the keyboard shortcut Option Shift 3, which renders uh, a region. Um, so, actually, let me show how to do that first. If I were to get rid of this and select all that and press Option Shift 3, makes a new audio file, but all this is silent now. So that's how you kind of make your uh, edits permanent would be a way to think about that. I'm going to undo that. So if I select all this and I come up here... Uh, you can use the P and semicolon arrows to navigate through your session. Um, uh, the P and semicolon just on your keyboard. And I render that length. And let's move it up here. Oops. Put it on the top. Yeah, that's nice. Now, whenever I want to bounce the whole song, I can just click right there before I hit bounce, and it'll be the same length every time. So that's a, that's a trick that I use uh, that now, now you can use. All right, uh, have fun.